If first person shooters are your idea of heaven, then VR is the perfect place for you to be. It takes first person shooters to the next level with an experience that significantly ups the ante with immersive gameplay compared to just playing on a PC or a console. And being cable free on an Oculus Quest headset just adds to that. You actually have to physically peek round corners, duck behind cover and even stab someone in the head with a knife. So if that's your bag, then here's my list of the best first person shooters that I think you should be playing on the Oculus Quest. Some are free, some are not, but all are worth playing. Welcome to my tech gear. Let's get into it. Now, if you do enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and share it. And if you're not subscribed, consider hitting that button down below and that notification bell so you're notified about new videos as and when I post them. This all really helps me grow the channel so that I can keep making videos like this for you. Thanks. Onward is a first person military simulator or milsim shooter where you need to rely on your team coordination and communication skills rather than a run and gun type approach in order to succeed. Strategy is a massive component of this game where scouting out what's ahead, using drones and working as a team plays dividends. Call of Duty this is not. With solo, co-op and competitive game modes available, there's certainly a variety of gameplay here to keep you occupied. Take to the online battlefield and join your friends in a cross-platform combat with up to 10 people. Best your opponents on a strategic and tactical level in an uplink or assault match, chase down AI bots in a hunt mission or wait for extraction as waves of enemies approach you during an evac mission. The game has seen steady improvements to its gameplay with regular updates from the developer since it's released and it is now certainly a more polished game for it. If a military simulator FPS is what you're after then this really is your only choice. If you're more of a Call of Duty run and gun type person then Contractors is sure to not disappoint. This is a game that originally started life on the SideQuest platform in beta form before moving to the main Oculus Quest platform as a fully fledged game. The graphics certainly aren't groundbreaking but they are more than good enough and the gameplay is great. It's certainly the best Call of Duty type game that I've played on the Quest to date. I find the controls easy to use and how they've designed your flak jacket that houses all of your accessories makes it incredibly easy to grab what you need when you need it, an absolute necessity in the middle of a gunfight. With a variety of multiplayer modes available such as deathmatch, domination, bomb defusal, there's plenty to keep you busy. Training modes and solo and bot matches are also present and are good enough in their own right, but also help you fine tune your skills so you can get back into those multiplayer games guns blazing. For those of you after an FPS that is faster paced than onwards, then Contractors is certainly one worth checking out. Pavlov Shack is a multiplayer online shooter in a similar vein to classic first person shooters such as Counter-Strike. The game sees you play in various team based battle modes including the classic deathmatch, capture the flag and Counter-Strike inspired seek and destroy modes. The variety doesn't end at the game modes though, with a healthy range of weaponry for you to choose from where each weapon reloads differently. This ensures that to get the best out of the game you're going to have to do some learning. There is also a wealth of online players ready to play with and it's already a pretty polished game despite it being in beta release in App Lab. It is a very similar game to Contractors that came before it and it can be polarizing as to which one people think is the best. I'd suggest checking them both out but you might want to check this one out first. Why? Well Pavlov Shack is currently available on Oculus's App Lab and so is currently available for free. Do expect it to turn into a fully fledged game in the Quest or later this year though for a rumoured $24. Until then it's a great time to jump in and try out the full game for free. Population 1 is a battle royale game in a similar vein to Fortnite reimagined for VR. Up to 24 players can play online at a time in a Fortnite similar format where teams of three battle it out in a single world map where a safety circle is forever decreasing, forcing teams closer together until only one team is left standing. This is all pretty standard battle royale fare but there are some fundamental differences that make it a truly unique experience in VR. You can climb anything and I do mean anything. You can also jump off anything and glide to safety. This dynamic to the game allows you to quickly climb buildings to gain a vantage point over your enemies and then glide yourself away to safety and quickly change location, turning the side of the battle. It's a game mechanic that means you are constantly looking everywhere because there really is no telling where the next team could be hiding. Even just increasing your health is unique as it involves you having to eat a banana where you actually have to peel back the skin of the banana in order to eat it. It's this attention to detail and focusing on what makes a game good in VR that stops it being a simple rip-off clone of Fortnite and makes it a truly unique game in its own right. If Population 1 is VR's answer to Fortnite, then Larsenauts is VR's answer to Overwatch. You select your hero from a range of characters and then battle it out in three different game modes in a 6v6 match online. With a graphical style and gameplay that is very reminiscent of Overwatch, it was a game that I really wanted to like. But 
there are some issues with the game that stop me doing that. There is no manual reload option and running automatically moves your arms, both of which I think spoils the VR immersion experience. You can't shoot when you run, which I think feels out of place in a game that is this fast paced and some of the characters just feel unbalanced and the lack of skill based matchmaking is really starting to hurt the game already. There are future updates planned to address some of these issues, but it's frustrating that they were there to start with. It all feels like an early access beta game and one that really should have been released in App Lab first so they could have ironed out a lot of these kinks. It's not all negative though, as I think it has so much potential. An Overwatch style game with a lot of promise, but with too many issues at the moment to wholeheartedly recommend it. I still think you should check it out though and decide for yourself, or wait for a few updates before doing so. Hyper Dash is a team based online shooter that sees two teams of five play against each other in various scenarios, including variations on capture the flag, hold the point, and deathmatch games. Moving around the game is done by either teleporting or dashing short distances. You can also navigate around the map by hopping onto rails and sliding along them at speed. It's a great way to get somewhere quickly, although it does leave you a little bit of a sitting duck as everyone can work out your telemetry and gun you down pretty quickly. There are a variety of guns available which you can either wield two-handed or have a gun in one hand with a shield in the other. This does provide you with extra cover, but at the cost of reduced firepower as you only have one gun. The games are typically short and sharp and the array of weaponry and fast movements in the game ensure an engaging and fast match. It's wonderfully quick to play and easy to pick up too, with a great online community playing this game too. The game was first released on SideQuest as a free beta app before moving to the Quest Store as a fully fledged game. It's a prime example of a developer using the gaming community to help improve the game and it's a model that other development houses would be wise to follow. In a rare addition to the military shooter category of games we have Zero Calibre Reloaded a game that actually has a single player campaign mode. Not only can you play through the whole campaign by yourself, but you can also go online and play through the campaign with up to three other friends in a four player co-op mode. Both those features alone make it unique in a world swimming with online shooters. You can fully customize your loadout, that's the gear you carry with you in the game, with a large array of guns to choose from. And the more you play the game, the more guns and add-ons such as grips and sights you unlock, so you can upgrade your gun. And in game, you can even hit your enemy with your gun instead of shooting them. This is super satisfying and actually really useful, especially if you suddenly run out of ammo or get surprised by an enemy soldier appearing around a corner. The scenery isn't going to win any awards for high definition graphics, and its simplicity makes it feel like a beta version of a finished game that's about to come good. The developer is releasing regular updates for it already, so I'm probably not too far from the truth there. With that said and done though, there is enough uniqueness in the game that offset the issues, and single player campaigns are a rarity, so I definitely recommend checking it out. First person shooter, hacker, slasher, and nightmare, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is another single player game that provides one of the most engrossing games to date. It is an amazing feat to have crammed such a good game onto the standalone Quest headset and the attention to detail in the game is impressive. The game even utilizes the extra power of the Quest 2 to provide more detail to your surroundings in game on the Quest 2 over the older Quest 1 but it will still run on both headsets. Everything has been designed to pull you into the game and give you that immersive VR experience that you deserve in the world of The Walking Dead. Taking down zombies with your gun is fun and all, but the real fun starts when you start taking down zombies with melee weapons such as knives and axes. There is a physical weight to these weapons and you actually have to use them with some force in order to stab a zombie in the head, otherwise your blade just bounces off their skull. Having to then pull the blade out before taking on your next zombie with all the sound effects that it provides never gets old. Meanwhile, those weapons actually degrade over time the more you use them, so you're always on the hunt for new weaponry. It's this combination of physical gameplay and real life limited resources that all adds to the atmosphere and engrossing gameplay of the game. It is one of the more expensive games on the Quest at $40 though, but it's also one of the most polished and biggest games on the platform too. So there you have it, some of the best first person shooters for you to consider for your next purchase. Remember that Oculus has a refund policy whereby if you've owned the game for less than 14 days, and have played it for less than two hours, then you can apply for a full refund of the purchase price. So if you try any of these games and don't like it, there's a nice little safety net for you to fall back on. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and share it. Consider subscribing if you're not. And as always, see you in the next one.